Following World War I, while the rest of the world was facing an imminent economic collapse, the United States was beginning to experience one of the most prosperous economic periods in its history. Between the years 1920 and 1929, the United States accumulated 40% of the total world wealth. Between the years 1920 and 1929, the average annual income rose by nearly 30% in the United States. And between the years 1920 and 1929, the U.S. national income level rose by nearly 25%. There was a recipe for this economic boom during the 1920s. New technologies led to increased wages. Increased productivity meant more products for consumers. Lower income tax rates meant more income for American consumers to spend. Easily available credit allowed consumers to spend beyond their means. And higher tariffs on imports led to increased profits for American firms. The booming 1920s economy was spurred by a massive wave of American consumerism. In the 1920s, America was flush with income, and Americans were eager to spend. They mostly bought newly innovative goods that made life easier. As electricity spread throughout the country, consumers bought up home electrical appliances. Electric refrigerators, washers, and stoves made life easier for housewives and gave Americans more leisure time. Mass production techniques made these goods more readily available and drove down prices. Electric appliances were common in urban and suburban homes, but most rural areas still lacked electricity. Nonetheless, the electrical appliance became mainstream in the 1920s. The flood of new goods in the market and consumerism fed the advertising industry. The advertising industry itself made huge profits from selling ads and consulting firms. Ads increased consumer demand for goods and informed buyers of new products. Ads appealed to people's desire for youth, wealth, and beauty, and also played on their fears. Ads convinced buyers that luxuries were necessities and brand names became familiar. Slogans like, say it with flowers, and reach for a lucky instead of a sweet, influenced buyer's spending. As the U.S. economy continued to grow, the 1920s undoubtedly became the decade of the car. The automobile changed America forever. One reason why the car became so huge was Henry Ford and his assembly line. Ford employed this assembly line in all of his Ford car plants nationwide. The assembly line standardized car production, making it faster and cheaper to produce cars. This technology spread to other industries as well, making all goods cheaper and more abundant throughout the entire economy. Cars also changed the American landscape forever. More roads became paved, interstate highways and routes were built, and new towns and businesses popped up along those routes. Think Radiator Springs in the movie Cars. Gas stations and motels popped up along highways. Even new homes were built with garages, carports, and driveways to accommodate the family's new car. To understand the effectiveness of the assembly line, just take a look at these numbers. By October 31st, 1925, Ford plants produced 9,109 new Ford Model Ts. That translates to one for every 10 seconds of the working day. With this kind of efficiency, Ford was able to lower the price of a Model T from $850 in the year 1908 to $300 by the year 1926. The popularity of the car created the urban sprawl. Highways caused cities to expand outward and the suburbs flourished. Workers moved out of the city and drove into work, getting away from overcrowded cities. Rural families gained mobility. The highway also helped connect markets across the country. And travel became independent. You no longer had to rely on mass transit to get where you wanted to go. As more and more cars were being built, other industries began to flourish. The car boom led to a boom in steel, rubber, glass, and other oil industries, all products used to create cars. Cities that produced cars exploded, like Pontiac, Michigan, Flint, Michigan, and Detroit. Fun fact, this is why we call Detroit Motor City. In the Roaring Twenties, everything appeared to be blue skies. From the outside, it seemed like the economy was booming like never before, and everyone was prospering. But in reality, the United States was only experiencing a superficial prosperity. There were several signs that the times were perhaps not as prosperous as they actually appeared, and there were actually deep-rooted problems in the American economy. The first warning sign was massive consumerism on credit. To keep pace with consumerism, Americans borrowed money to spend. Despite increased wages, most consumers spent beyond their means to fuel consumerism. Installment plans advertised a buy now, pay later approach. Buyers could put a small portion down and pay back loans over time at a very low interest rate. This kind of credit attracted consumers because they could enjoy their goods now without having to pay for it all in full right away. However, fundamentally, this was a major weakness in the economy because most consumers spent without regard to how to pay back credit in the future. 
Many American consumers built up a huge crippling amount of debt with no possible means to pay it off. Another warning sign was a series of economic inequalities. As corporations merged and carried massive profits, other industries declined. Key industries such as iron and railroads struggled to survive and took losses. This led firms to lay off large numbers of workers. Farmers also struggled with the post-war surplus of crops and cheap crop prices. During the war, farmers took out loans in order to produce more products. With the market from the war closed, they had huge surpluses and were not able to pay back their loans. Additionally, the decadence of the rich masked the growing income gap. Essentially, as the rich played, the poor starved. As the top earners saw their income grow quickly, poor Americans saw their income growing very slowly. This made it difficult to continue the spending spree of the 20s. While the rich continued to spend and had the ability to spend, it was not able to carry the economy the way it would if all Americans were spending money. Looking back on the Roaring Twenties, it is easy to see a decade of economic prosperity and decadence. But underneath the surface, there were major problems in the United States economy that would lay the foundation for the greatest economic downturn in our nation's history.